Hello students and welcome to this training program on VLSI on Internshala. In this program we are going to learn about the VLSI domain and the technology and how you can make different VLSI systems. So let us get started and in this introductory video we are going to talk about that what exactly is VLSI, how this field has evolved and what is VLSI design flow. We are also going to talk about the Moore's law and how different microprocessors have evolved throughout these years. So let us get started and talk about the term VLSI. VLSI stands for very large scale integration. How large and what is integration? Large means millions and even billions of transistors and putting them together on a single chip is called integration. These devices in modern technology are basically transistors. CMOS transistor, complementary metal oxide semiconductor transistors. Earlier they used to be field effect transistors FET and the first transistors were bipolar junction transistors BJT. This technology has advanced at unmatched pace. No other technology has advanced at such a high pace. If we were able to integrate only thousands of transistors or the devices on a single chip around three decades back, now we are able to integrate millions and even billions on the same chip. This is the level of advancement we are talking about. We are not having that in any other field like the cars are not running thousand times faster now or the engines are not giving thousand times better fuel efficiency. And that is the reason that the computing community has grown at such a high pace over these decades. Let us talk about this evolution now. We started with SSI which is small scale integration where we were putting together less than 100 components on a single chip. Then came medium scale integration where we just enhanced the number of components by around 5 times and we were able to integrate around 500 components. Then came large scale integration where we are able to integrate around 3 lakh components also. How did that happen? That happened because of computer aided design tools CAD and now in VLSI we are able to integrate even millions and billions of transistors on a single chip. In some literature you can also study a term called ULSI which is ultra large scale integration but more or less it's considered as a part of VLSI. Let us have a look at two pictures. The first one on the left is a bulky thing being carried in an aeroplane and on the right side is a familiar picture which is a hard disk that we use nowadays in our daily life. Well, the first one is also a hard disk. This was the first hard disk which was manufactured by IBM and the capacity was only 10 MB. And as you know, the modern hard disk, they are around 2.5 inches in the width and can be easily carried in our pockets and they have the capacities in terabytes. This is the level of advancement that VLSI had in these decades. So let us talk about the VLSI design flow. The process that we follow to design any system using VLSI techniques is called VLSI design flow and this is going to include the designing, simulation, testing and verification part. Our training program will focus on all these four aspects. If we understand the complete design flow, we will be given the user specifications. That means this is the system you have to design. These are my constraint. I need only this much chip area or I need only this much power usage by the chip. Once we have that, then we decide that what will be the architecture of our design. There are different architectures. We will study them in our training program. We will be having the logic design after that, that how do I connect different inputs, how do I process them 
and generate the output. Once the logic design is done, then we go to the HDL coding. HDL means Hardware Descriptive Language. In this training, our main focus will be on the logic design and coding using these HDLs. We are going to use a programming language called Verilog for all the coding purposes. Once the coding is done, then we have to verify our design at RTL level, which is register transfer level. That means we are going to see if the circuit which is produced after the coding is correct or not. If everything is fine and we meet the specifications, we go for the fabrication. Otherwise, we come back to the coding, optimize the code and again check it. In this training program, we are not going to talk about the fabrication process because that is a completely different aspect of VLSI design. Let us talk about a very important law called Moore's law. This law has been guiding the industry for decades that how this industry will grow. In 1965, Gordon Moore said that in every 14 to 18 months, the number of transistors that we integrate on a single chip will double. So in around three years, we will be able to put together four times the number of transistors. In another three years, another four times, so total 16 times. So he predicted an exponential growth for the VLSI industry. This law also defined the speed at which the VLSI will evolve and has evolved throughout these years. It said that your chip size will keep on going down and the speed of the circuits will keep on going up. We are going to produce compact and faster chips every year. Let us have a look at the historical data. On the x-axis, we have the years and y-axis, we have the number of transistors on a given chip. And we can see that there is a straight line which is relating the x and y-axis. But the y-axis is logarithmic. That means if it had been a regular axis, then this line would have been exponential. So Moore's law have defined and predicted correctly and we have been able to follow the Moore's law for VLSI advancements. One of the most important chips that we design is microprocessors. We started in 1971 with a 4-bit microprocessor called MP4004 and in three years later came 8-bit microprocessor 8008. These were very basic microprocessors they were able to perform very simple arithmetic operations. Then came the 16-bit microprocessor 8086 in 1978. This microprocessor had a lot of operations to be performed and computing community started growing with this microprocessor. In 1986, 80286, and 1993 Pentium processor came. These were the fourth generation of microprocessors and 32-bit microprocessors. This processor, the Pentium processor, really revolutionized the personal computers. Now we were able to perform a lot of general purpose tasks through these microprocessors and that is the reason that computer came in every home. In 2010, Intel launched the fifth generation, which is 64-bit microprocessors in the form of i3, i5 and i7 series. These are the modern state-of-the-art and very high-performing microprocessors. So, students, I am sure that you have a good idea about VLSI now, but a lot of questions are still unanswered. One of them is, what are the scopes in this domain? So, in the next video, we are going to talk about the scope in the VLSI industry. Keep learning. Thank you.